Alright guys, tonight we are doing uh, a re-review, or a follow-up review, and a more in-depth kind of test of this rod. Um, I had done an initial review of this a few months ago, um, but I have a viewer. His name is Yuri Fishing, and he is thinking about getting his first BFS set up, and like the look of this rod, and wanted additional information about how it performs uh casting one to three grams and so i told him hey that's a great idea because i have never really tested this thing at its full range of weights and i was curious myself and you know what it'd make great content so yeah um so again by far this is my favorite cdm rod that is not below 40 bucks i got this from aliexpress and um as you can see First of all, it's a beautiful rod. You look at the butt in there. Uh, it's nice cork. I like the color scheme. By the way, this is not the reel I was using for the test. I was using the Alder Baron. Um, it's got this X wrap look here. And it is a two piece, but where it's jointed, it looks pretty clean. And um, this is a two piece six footer. And it's a light rod it is rated for three to eight pound line and it is uh the lower weight is one to eight grams all right so this tonight is going to be really i'm going to be showing you guys some slow motion of the load on the tip using various weights and then casting those weights to see how, how what, what it looks like distance wise and then in the end i'm going to do a, a summary all right i'll see you guys in the summary but yeah um so today so for this video i'm going to do like slow mos of uh, the how various weights um put a load on the tip all right, we're going to start out with as low as actually a trout magnet uh, and then um, as, as uh, heavy as a quarter ounce. And then I'm going to do some casts and uh, just kind of uh, show you how far each um, bait goes. Now All right, guys, for this next part, I'm going to be narrating over the video because I'm doing the slow-mo through the camera rather than Premiere and there's no audio when you do it through the camera. Uh, I'm doing it through the camera because the slow-mo is a, a quality is a lot better than through Premiere. Once, if you slow it down too much in Premiere it looks uh, really choppy. So this first one here is the trout magnet. Um, it's really not within the recommended range of, of uh, weight, lure weight for this rod but I just wanted to throw it in there just to see what it looks like. A uh, trout magnet is, I believe, less than half a gram or 1 64th of an ounce. Um, as you can see, it's barely, it's still, you can still see a little bit of a load on the tip of this rod. So I think you can still cast this if you wanted to. It wouldn't be fun. Uh, limited to small bodies of water, sheltered from the wind. Um, you would have to have a really good reel. Uh, very light line um, and probably just spooled halfway but um, but yeah I think it's doable but it's uh, I, w I wouldn't do it it's just um, it's not made for this rod all right so this next one is a one gram jig head or one thirty second one thirty second of an ounce this is the bottom end of the recommended lure weight for this rod so let's see what the um, load looks like on this slow-mo now I'm doing this after the fact so I have actually test cast of this and you guys will see but as you can see there's a little more um, action and load on that tip with this lure than the trout magnet so you can uh, leverage and take advantage of that that tip of that rod when you're casting. See that? See? 
I think you're getting a decent um, decent load on that tip with such a light weight. All right, so this next one is a um, 1.8 gram jig head. It has a um, instead of the trout grub, it has a crappie grub, so it's a little bit bigger. It's uh, approximately one sixteenth of an ounce and definitely noticeable much better load on the uh, on the rod now in my opinion I think you're getting into starting to get into the sweet spot of this rod or this weight um, it's still not the in my opinion the optimal I think the next range up is is probably the best but um, but yeah it's uh, it's getting a good load on that on that tip now all right, so this next one is 3.5 grams, or about an eighth of an ounce. Uh, yeah, and look at this. Um, this is definitely a sweet spot weight right here for this rod. Look at the load it's putting on that. You can really take advantage of the tip. Um, with this rod throwing this bait right, in my opinion this weight and the next weight up which is six grams um, is really nice when you're casting it all right guys this is the uh, uh, six grams or about a quarter ounce again another great weight for this um, for this rod it's putting a really nice load on the tip there but it's still not overpowering the rod so um, again making an optimal for casting this weight I mean you can you can probably cast this weight right here a mile <laughs> it's a uh, it, it, it feels really nice when you're casting this um, this range with this rod all right guys so this next one is three-eighths of an ounce this is actually a slobber knocker. It's um, approximately 10 grams, according to the uh, ounce to grams, grams to ounce uh, Google calculator. Anyways, as you can see, this weight is really starting to overpower this rod. Look how much that's bending. So when that happens, you're not getting the op you're not maximizing what that rod can do to help you cast. And so I think at this point it's not going to be fun casting this you sur certainly can but you're going to worry about that tip possibly breaking or um and you're not going to get the most out of each cast all right guys so as you could see from that last one and that was actually beyond the recommended weight for this rod but i just wanted to throw it in there just like the trout magnet just to see what it looked like from one extreme to the other and um as you can see that uh Way, way too much weight for this rod. Um, you could still cast it, but it wouldn't be f fun, and you might even break that tip um, if you put enough force into it. And you're not going to get the most out of uh, distance out of your cast. All right, guys. This next one is the slobber knocker, which is three eighths of an ounce, or approximately 10 grams. Again, this is above the uh, recommended weight for this. As you can see, you can still cast it. I mean, you, it's still going. You're sh still getting good distance. But in my opinion, at least when how it felt to me, um, it's just too heavy. And if you're not thinking and you put a lot of force into it, um, you're going to... I would just be afraid I'd, I'd snap that tip. All right, guys. This next one is the uh, quarter ounce or 3.5. I'm sorry, 6 grams definitely one of the sweet spot weight for this rod I mean I was casting this thing anywhere f uh, I think the longest one was close to the base of that big tree and um, you could definitely get it out further than that I wasn't really trying to, to do some super long casts with this so yeah um, very easy to cast and uh, just optimal weight for this rod. Alright guys, this next one is um, one eighth ounce or 3.5 grams, approximately one eighth ounces. <coughs> um, I was able to throw this 
consistently right at the edge where see all the leaves start to pile up in that corner and um maybe about a couple of yards from from that dumpster and this is the uh the one eighth or three point five grams so yeah and very easily done no issues at all um with backlashing it was just still very easy to cast all right so this next one is the one sixteenth or one eighth gram one sixteenth of an ounce one eighth grams i didn't adjust the brakes of the reel for any of these weights kudos to the aldebaran but with this weight it was definitely starting to go left and that's uh indi indicative of um, having too much brake so but it was consistently getting to right to the edge of that um with that uh the leaves start to pile up um, you can definitely put a little more empt into it um but i was still just consistently getting it right to the edge of that leaf but still no problem with a sixteenth of an ounce or one eighth grams all right guys this next one is the one thirty second of an ounce or approximately one gram now with this weight i definitely started to have some issues <coughs> with backlashing in uh there was a couple of first casts that i cut out where i did have a backlash and it, it didn't help that it, you could see the the weather is really turning and the wind started picking up when i first started casting this lure it was so it was a super bad time but i walked over to because it was really getting hard to see where it was landing I walked over to where it was landing and um, so wherever you see me walk uh, that's where it's landing and uh, I did it a couple of times just just to make sure that I was getting some consistency in the cast not just a, it wasn't just a one-time thing so I walked over to the spot and you, as you can see it's definitely going left so it's indicative of the over braking I could have probably adjusted the brake and maybe tweaked it a little more to get more out of it all right guys this is the <laughs> trout magnet i decided to try to cast it just for sng but something happened here i couldn't see where it was landing because it was so small the light wasn't very good and so i had a really bad backlash and then by the time i cleared the backlash the trout magnet had uh, broken off so I couldn't find it. So that was the end of the uh, trout magnet experiment. All right, I'll see you guys inside the house where I'm gonna do a summary. All right, guys. So in summary, I would definitely recommend this rod. It not only looks beautiful, but it performed well, in my opinion. It looks clean. The design, uh, the color scheme, uh, the the balance and uh, sensitivity are all there and you can't beat the price you know this is a sub $100 rod on AliExpress and yeah I think it would make a great first BFS rod so yeah um, just to let you all know that I am a very small channel I'm not sponsored by anybody so I'm not no one's paying me to to do these and um, also, I wanted to thank everybody for um, subbing, commenting, and um, liking because it's uh, really helping the channel and uh, it's, it's slowly but surely growing and I'm really enjoying this whole process. So thanks guys and then more content to come. And let me know if you guys want me to do any more of these kind of in-depth um, in review and test of existing gear I have. Uh, I don't think I have enough money right now to buy everything and test it. Um, but I would be more than happy to test what I already have if you want to know a little more information about it because you're interested in getting one yourself. All right, again, thank you for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.